Hey friends, Mike here. It is Wednesday the 26th. Uh, just want to give you a quick little garden update. It's beautiful. The weather is amazing. Uh, we had a wonderful weekend at Lukenbach. I hope you guys enjoyed those couple of videos. What, what a really nice time Miss Rochelle and I had. A little vacation. Um, this weekend, there's actually going to be the Poppy Festival in Georgetown, Texas. We're going to take you guys out there and maybe do a little bit of shopping and looking around. Maybe grab something to eat. Um, but yeah, it's Wednesday the 26th. The sun is out. 78 degrees. Over the last four or five days, we've gotten four inches of rain. And it, I'm going to show you, the, it's amazing what the rain will do for the garden. So let's go take a look. So everything is just doing amazing, really wonderful. Uh, the garlic is doing that crazy thing where it gets all these little shoots. This is the hardneck garlic. It's pr producing more bulbs is what it's doing. But we've got some radishes down here. They're starting to, to bulb. You can see a couple of those. The tomatoes are really doing great. I've had to come out here at least every day to pull suckers. But they're doing good. I don't string mine up, guys. I just leave them in the cage, and I do pull the suckers. Um, and I have actually been pulling some of the blooms. I don't want them to produce just yet until they get about four feet. For example, right here, you'll see there's a bloom. I'm going to go ahead and just pull that for now. And here in about five days, I'll go ahead and let them. Once they get above this top part of the cage, uh, then I'll let them go and start blooming and producing tomatoes. Basil's doing really good. Good companion plant for tomatoes, guys. Tomato and basil, plus they taste good together. Now I've got to get in here and you know get some of these weeds. It's just been raining so much, I've got to pull these. And then I'll, I'll um, condition the soil. But everything's looking good, as you can see. I don't have any snow peas for you, Lily. Sorry. Squash along the fence is doing good. I'm going to be using those clips. Get away, Bonesy. Nope. I'll be, I'll be using those tomato clips and they'll be growing above uh, on the uh, trellis. The herb garden is just blown up. Once I harvest this garlic in here, you'll be able to see all the other plants. We've got thyme. We have parsley, the dill. I'm going to be harvesting this this afternoon and then hanging it in the mud room to dry. Oregano, chives, rosemary. The arugula is doing really well. We have two types of arugula. We have the broadleaf, and then we have the rocket. They'll just, they'll grow together and mix. For those of you folks that are in North Texas or Northeast Texas, please be careful. I've been watching the weather. It's pretty bad. A lot of red cells. Um, we follow a couple channels. Uh, North Texas, uh, Jill and Greg, Peak. Please be careful. Weather's going to be bad. It's going to be here tonight around 8 to 9 p.m. So we're going to be probably sitting out watching, just kind of listening. Uh, we don't want any tornadoes. We don't want any hail to d damage everything that we've got growing here. So we'll just pray and cross fingers and just hope that God protects everybody. But we'll take the rain, not like last year. So our peppers are doing really well on the ground. Uh, in between, we've planted some beets. I've had to replant some of the seeds. We've got all different kinds of peppers, jalapenos. Uh, here's some, some more red and orange beets. Uh, tomatillos are doing really good. They're, they're budding. I let them bud. I'm not gonna mess with them, but they're gonna have a whole bunch of tomatillos. We'll make some salsa verde and we'll can that. Elephant garlic, I'm really happy with this. I can't wait to harvest this and see how big they are. Cilantro is going to seed, folks, so it's going to turn into coriander. I'm kind of getting low on my coriander, so I want to go ahead and let it go to seed, and then I'll show you guys how I harvest those. Um, there's a, a paper bag method that takes about two days to where you basically will pinch the plant. Oh, there's a ladybug. Good luck. And then you'll put a paper bag over, and you kind of turn it on the side, and then the coriander seeds will fall down in there. We planted some more carrots. Uh, this is a collard green. I, I just need to harvest that. It's kind of going to seed. The onions, very happy with our onions. We just planted here some seed a couple days ago. We're going to be doing purple and green baby bok choy. 
The bell peppers are doing really well. I planted some lettuce in between here. The five gallon grow tables are doing good, guys. They're a little bit slow. Uh, these are different varieties of peppers. Those are scotch bonnets. These are the Italian long red peppers doing good. You know, as soon as the weather gets a little warmer, guys, they'll start to shoot up. I was a little worried about our okra, but it is finally doing better temperatures as they go up. Look at all that new growth on there. Now, these onions, these are a different variety than the Texas Legends. They're not as big. And guys, I have been actually harvesting some of these. So anytime the onions fold over, they're, they're done. They're not going to produce. We're going to go ahead and harvest it. And then I'm going to put it in our curing rack. In fact, I'll take you over there right now and show you what we're doing. And there's our mystery plant. I'm going to give you guys a close look. So we're just going to put it up here in our curing rack. I just put plastic up now to keep the rain off until I can get some something permanent plexiglass. But this will all be covered with um, onions and garlic, just like we did last year. You can go look at our other videos on onion and garlic. All right, guys, our compost mystery plant. Uh, let's take a look. Okay, looks like we've got something on here. I don't know, I think it might be pumpkin. We will see. But it's amazing how it's just growing out of the compost. So, hey, if it produces something, wonderful. Hugo Culture Garden is doing really good, guys. I got to get in here and I got to weed it. But we've got all just, just, just different kinds of squash and melons. It's just kind of my garden that I go to and just throw a little bit of everything in there and we'll see what comes up. You know, it's kind of an experiment. And we talked about Hugo Culture. You dig a trench, you put logs, you put wood, you put uh, tr tree limbs, leaves, and then you put your soil and it acts like a sponge in the hot weather and it keeps the plants alive, keeps everything moist. But I'll come in and I'll weed. We had a lot of wind, a lot of branches down. Our grow tables for our sweet potatoes here. And then our fingerling potatoes are doing amazing. Of course, you know the sweet potatoes will do much better. In the hotter weather, we've got new growth, as you can see right there. This will climb all over the fence. I need to extend this, uh, this railing. Just haven't had time. These potatoes are just going to town. They're wonderful. The, uh, we've started growing um, on the grow tables a couple of years ago because guys, I planted potatoes in the ground so many times and the fire ants just, they always go for it. Anytime there's water, you're in a hot climate, the fire ants are gonna go towards the water. Where's the water? Where the potatoes are. So. This method keeps it off the ground. If I have to mix some orange oil with water um, and then pour it around the legs, that will keep the, the ants um, away from the soil, which is moist. Uh, weather is gonna be getting warmer. Fire ants are gonna go where the water is. I can't plant in the ground. This method, uh, it, it's gonna work really good. Let's take a look at our onions. Guys, our onions are amazing. These are the Texas Legends. We didn't really plant as much as we did last year. Last year, we, gosh, we had a whole row. We had like 300 onions. Um, this is enough. But look how big those are. Let me show you. The size of my hand. Look at that. It's a softball size. And remember, guys, the secret to onions, when they start to get big, you want to wring them in. You want to move that soil. Loosen it up. Let that bulb. But these are all doing really well. Again, like this one has to be harvested. We'll put it on the curing rack. But we started this bed off with a really good amount of bone meal. That's gonna provide phosphorus. It's gonna help the root grow. And we've got some cabbages over here that are gonna grow up on the fence. So here on our grow table, guys, I went ahead and put the 40% shade cover over. A couple of reasons. I didn't want these delicate lettuce plants to get hit. Uh, with the heavy rain and now that the sun is out i just want it to start to acclimate to the hot weather but look at these microgreens they're they're turning into actual lettuce we're gonna have to harvest some of these and have a salad but we've got baby bok choy we've got our parsley but all these containers 
are starting to fill up with beautiful lettuce and spinach. And I, I replanted in some of these pots too. Sometimes you have to do that. But we've got a we've got a versatile little salad bar out here. Our bunching onions are actually growing bulbs, but that's all right. So if, if you don't have much space, guys, you can grow in pots. We've got our horseradish. We've got a five gallon over there. This is our um, um, sugar cane. We're just waiting to build a permanent bed uh, before we plant that. Guys, I got to tell you what, I'm very happy. Lots of prayers. We've got good weather this year. I know that some of the weather channels are saying the predictions that it's going to be another hot year. I, I don't think so. I, I'm hoping not. Uh, we, we don't want a repeat of last year. That was just terrible. 67, whoop, the bee. 67 days, no rain, and 100 to 109 degrees. Mm -mm, we don't want that. So we'll uh, we'll just pray and we'll see uh, what happens and we'll just we'll we'll be prepared. But those of you up north, Texas and northeast, please be careful. I'm watching the radar and it's it's looking kind of ominous. Let's take a look at some of the flowers. Well, as you can see, Miss Rochelle's poppies have taken over. <laughs> um, they're they're gonna go to seed. These pods right here will turn brown, and then when you shake them you'll hear the seeds that's when we're going to clip these off we pull the plants out we'll compost that and then this will clear up this this pretty little desert garden and we got to get in here and do some weeding as well too so guys all around the pool in our sitting areas and pots we have geraniums they're also called citronella plants uh, these are really good at keeping the bugs away they have that 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 lemony smell but miss Rochelle has these pots all around the pool sitting areas over here up by the patio as well too and they really keep the um the bugs away and they're beautiful too when they start to bloom geraniums or citronella plant well the morning glories are doing amazing uh, we did a video on building this little garden bed we actually had an old metal uh, bed frame it's concreted into the ground um, you guys can go back and see that video uh, what a cool project just a nice little sitting area so that we can sit and, and watch the humming hummingbirds and we've got some hummingbird feeders up here and they come out in the evening and it's just really fun to watch them well miss Brichelle's roses are doing really well this year um, we've got to trim this back and we've got some trees over here that we're gonna work with our neighbors. That's a peach tree. But we've got a hackberry tree that's just taken over and I'm worried about it busting the fence as you can see. So we're gonna we're gonna get together with our neighbors, our friends, and get out of chainsaws. We're gonna take that hackberry down, hopefully in the next couple of weekends. But look at these roses. They're doing amazing. It's nice to add color to the garden, guys, and it brings in pollinators. This is an area that we have to work on uh, this year. We've got to clean it out, put some weed barrier just to keep it in control. As you can see, this side is much better because we did that. We took out all the weeds. Our blackberry just is going nuts. We've got a bunch of blackberries on here. Here's a prime example, guys, of fire ants here in the south. You ready? They are insane. They will burn your skin. Terrible. Fire ants here in the south, guys. We don't really use a lot of poisons or anything, but let me tell you something. For these, we do. Yeah, everything's going good here in central Texas. Loving the weather. We're predicted to get some more rain this weekend. Uh, we're going to be going to the Poppy uh, Festival in Georgetown, Texas. Uh, 45 minutes away if it rains we'll just hang out in the rain i don't care we've got a bunch of new plants that are ready to go as soon as we harvest our onions and garlic i'm thinking over the next two weeks uh, we've got more peppers tomatoes tomatillos and i'm starting squash again i'm going to continue to keep planting squash seeds just keep going keep planting cyclically 
just keep them going guys here in the south we can grow squash all year round so yeah hopefully everybody's doing good guys up uh, north texas northeast texas please be careful it's going to be bad i've already been watching the radar and it's, whew, it's looking pretty bad but it's going to hit us here around 9 p.m but no thanks guys little garden update hopefully you guys enjoyed our trip to Lukenbach, and we'll do some filming this weekend um until then thanks for watching subscribe share with your friends God bless, guys. Take care.